afternoon. <clears throat> this has been a really interesting conference for me. I've um, been on the board, I presented my paper, and then earlier today I was Sung Hee Park, a graduate student in computer science, and presented his paper, and now I'm at Fox. <laughs> so you never know what you'll get at an ETD conference. But Ed couldn't be here due to a family emergency, so this morning Hussein has asked me to step in. And, and, you know, Ed has led the NDLTD since the beginning, and he will continue to do so. He and I are both on the faculty at Virginia Tech. He's in computer science, and I'm in the library. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, I am the director of the Digital Library and Archives, who we were originally known as the Scholarly Communications Project. And I've been involved with um, the ETD initiative at Virginia Tech for almost two decades, since the early 90s, when John Eaton, the dean of our graduate school at the time, came to um, the library's thesis processor, a cataloger, and said, um, you know, we're going to have electronic theses and dissertations. Does the library want to get involved? Well, duh. You know, of course we wanted to be involved, at least from my point of view. And so I think that um, many of you have probably been in a similar circumstance. People come to you and say, these things are going to happen. Let's figure out um, how it's going to be done. Or you could be on the other side of that coin. You could be more the visionary type. Um, either way, I want to thank you for, for being here and for participating, um, for being the stewards in the content of the content and, and ambassadors for your organizations. This is, of course, requires funding, but I think um, a really important um, reason to thank you is to recognize you for the time that you have committed to um, the community of ETD authors, managers, administrators, all of the people it takes to have an ETD initiative, because you also appreciate the importance of ETDs and are committed to making them publicly available. We want you to feel that you have a support structure, one that's both formal and informal. Um, support is provided to you through terrific annual conferences like the one here in Cape Town. I think the Cape Town Planning Committee, both the international group and the local group, um, have done a great job. I think we want to thank Daisy and Hussein and Elsa B and all of your students, Hussein, <laughs> and the other volunteers um, and the organiz organizations for which they work. Um, on behalf of the NDLTD and the conference participa participants, I want to thank the National Research Foundation of South Africa, the Committee for Higher Education in South Africa, and the Association of African Universities Database of African Theses and Dissertations. Thank you. The conference gives us a time to network and meet new colleagues. Um, you may not realize it now, but you have made friends that will support your work with ETDs for years to come. That has certainly been the case for me. The conference organizers have also fed us extremely well. <laughs> Thank you for giving us a taste of South African um, cuisine. You've also entertained us. But of course, of course most importantly, you've um, provided formal meeting venues where we have heard from our colleagues about their current ETD operations, um, but also about their aspirations for ETDs, the user communities, and the program systems. We've learned from each other for the past few days, and many of us will continue um, for another few days at the digital repository and the preservation workshops. So thank you, conference attendees, who also made presentations, the posters, and the workshop presenters. <laughs> the support structure provided by the ETD conference would not be possible without the NDLTD, the Networked Digital Library of Thesis and Dissertations. I think of it as having grown from a small group of interested people getting together in the mid-1990s. But of course, if Ed was here, he would tell you it goes back to the early 1980s and meetings with um, UMI and a few representatives from higher education institutions. But even from those early days that I remember, um, there have been international partnerships. I remember um, representatives from the UK, from Canada, from Germany, and I certainly remember Felix Uboku in 1998 and his participation. So this is, Felix is kind of a representative of what I was saying earlier. Um, you may not know what you're getting into now, but watch out. <laughs> um, I, was, I was glad that we were able to recognize Felix yesterday with a leadership award, but also Laura Hammonds from Texas for their leadership in the ETD arena. 
So both formal and informal involvement in this organization has led to ETD initiatives throughout the world and partnerships and friendships. <coughs> Several years ago, the NDN, NDLTD involved um, in, in a more evolved into a more formal structure. It became a registered nonprofit organization with an elected board of directors and a fee-based membership. The board of directors is around 20, um, 20 members. We meet twice a year, once at the conference and once often in DC in conjunction with membership meeting of the Coalition for Networked Information. Thanks in large part to Joan Lippincott, who's the associate director of CNI and also a board member on the NDLTD. In fact, the organization will benefit from her leadership also of the Strategic Planning Committee. The NDLTD benefits from all the board members, for example, from Austin McLean, who, is, um, who represents ProQuest. Um, he advocates for us um, with his company and has garnered substantial support for our awards program and for the conferences. Thank you. Next year, the NDLTD Award Committee will be looking for nominations for the awards that you learned about yesterday, but we're also going to have a new award that will recognize emerging leaders in, in, in the ETD arena. But speaking of committees, the NDLTD committees invite and welcome all of your participation. You do not need to be a member of the board of directors to contribute to the NDLTD. We welcome everyone who has ideas and a willingness to actively participate, whether in person or remotely. One of our most active members is currently um, led by a, a previous board member. We have Eric Vandeveld, who's usually in California, but sometimes in Belgium, to thank for our new online membership system so that you and or your institution can join us um, and, and make, take advantage of various payment options. I've been asked for a little sidebar here. When you do join, um, it asks you to list um, at least one person, but we'd like to have two or three people um, associated with your institution so that in case one person leaves, we have another contact. Eric Vandeveld um, should also be congratulated because he is responsible for a Google award of $10,000 in free advertising, and this has already drawn um, quite a bit of attention, additional attention to the NDLTD website. The, the Board of Directors supports ETD communities in a variety of ways, such as sponsoring the work that I reported on yesterday about the survey that we did of publishers' attitudes at ETDs, and I can't help but make my plug here since I've got the podium. I want you to remember to go back to your universities and tell your graduate students and your faculty that 96% of the survey respondents will accept submissions from open access ETDs. Remember, what the journal editors and the press directors are looking for is a quality manuscript which was written to address their particular audience. The board is also responsible for working with the Meta Archive Cooperative and offers NDLTD board members a very workable and affordable <coughs> preservation strategy. Backups are good, but they are not a preservation strategy, so please look into this benefit of membership in the NDLTD. There's also a body of thorough documentation that's been amassed at www.ndltd.org. This includes the ETD guide, which has a wealth of information, especially if you're just starting or are in the early stages of your initiative. The board also supports access to ETDs through various union catalog initiatives over the years. Both BTLS and OCLC have harvested ETDs, and then recognized that OCLC's World Catalog Gateway provided an excellent opportunity to harvest hundreds of thousands of metadata records for ETDs. We're at a, we are at a crossroads, however, and Hussein at the University of Cape Town will be managing the NDLTD Union Catalog in the interim. We hope that you are taking the extra step to make your ETDs open access and their metadata harvestable. Ana Pavani, a board member from Brazil, is our institutional memory about the improvements to ETD-MS, the metadata standard, that need to be implemented. Please contact Hussein or Ana or any member of the board with your questions or concerns about making your institution's ETD metadata available through the NDLTD Union Catalog. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about the board members. We actually have three new, more, new board members that were elected at this conference. Peter Sidorko from the University of Hong Kong, 
Libio Hurtado from a university in San Marcos, Peru, and Charles Greenberg from Yale University will be joining the board. Unfortunately, fortunately, they're joining the NTLTD board because th we're losing three other board members. Bruce Cochran from Miami University of Ohio, Julia Blixrud from the Association of Research Libraries based in Washington, D.C., and William Clark from Ohio State University. So I'd like you to help me in welcoming uh, um, our new board members, the ones that are coming, the ones that are leaving, and also the current participants in the board. Um, they volunteer their time and resources to serve your ETD initiatives and the NDLTD. Thank you. <laughs> Let me conclude by um, thanking Daisy and the National Research Foundation, Hussein and the University of Cape Town, um, LCB and the University of Pretoria and everyone who's worked so hard to make this one of our best ETD conferences, not only in an entirely new venue which gave many of us our first opportunity to visit Africa, but in a collegial atmosphere where we formally networked, but also in relaxed, relaxed atmospheres where we could also informally start new friendships and partnerships. Now's a good time to look to the future. As a board member, I look forward to welcoming new members. You may want to benefit from the experiences of your colleagues you have met at this conference, but we also look forward to learning from you as you take your ET initiatives into the future. And now we're going to hear about future NDLTD conferences. Next year, it will be, um, the conference will be held in Lima, Peru in 2013 in, at, in Hong Kong, and in 2014 uh, in the UK at the University of Leicester. If you're interested in hosting a conference, you can find helpful documentation at www.mdltd.org. Thank you.